dude, your hair yeah. is wow. <laughs> Dude, is it recording the video? It is, right? Yeah. What's up, Zen Dude Nation? How's everybody doing today? I'd like to introduce you to Tarzan. Brandon actually, uh, Brandon <laughs> died. Brandon died in a freak uh, skateboarding accident in Medellin, Colombia. He got hit by a motorcycle. So uh, I had to get a new Zen dude, and he came with hair that is three feet long, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You got some questions to answer today on Ask the Zen Dudes? Yeah, man. Dude, how about that YouTube Next Up thing, right? Screw those guys. We applied to learn how to be YouTubers, and they told us, we don't accept your kind. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was because um, they're racist towards jump ropes, specifically ah. as a big I've heard, yes. That is a good lesson, though, dude. That's a good lesson in perseverance because, Zen Dude Nation, just to let you guys know, we have now been turned down by GVS, which was a GSV, GVS. They're not important, so I don't even remember. Um, they were like a, an incubator for people making movies and stuff out in Hawaii, and we applied. Um, we were super psyched about it. We didn't get that. Then, didn't we apply for another YouTube thing and didn't get that? I swear we, were, we yeah, applied probably. to like... We applied to some other thing on YouTube, didn't get that, and then Brandon and I were super psyched because we were going to apply to, like, we had, like, you know, like, 75K subscribers when we applied, um, and we were really psyched about this next, YouTube Next Up is a program in New York City where you go and learn to grow your channel, and we thought we were very qualified, so what I'm trying to say is, guys, we have now been rejected by a few, I think Zen Dude Nation, this is a good lesson because... <clears throat> Obviously, Brandon and I wanted to get those things, but I sent Brandon a text last night after I received the email saying that he sent me the email saying that we didn't get the YouTube Next Up New York. And honestly, like I was a little bit hurt before, like the GVS thing. I was like, oh, man, the weed thing. I was like, oh, man, this time I was like, don't even care, like don't even care. And I think that's a good lesson in perseverance, guys, because you probably like our audience doesn't know that we keep getting rejected by these things. But that's not like that does that is not going to affect our trajectory forward and to be honest with you guys I think it's a sign that we didn't get this in Hawaii we didn't get this in New York that's the reason that we're moving to Los Angeles so I feel I actually feel kind of great man I actually feel like it's more fuel on the motivation fire bro should we should we do these questions let's answer these questions do you have uh, any uh for anyone or just the meetups meet meetups, meetups. Do you want to say meet yours? Up. Say yours, and then I'll say mine. Yes. My meetup is April, no, April, May 27th, 12 p.m., Venice Beach, California, uh, Los Angeles, California. That's the only one I have so far. I got to get some other ones set up. I'm still, I'm working with possibly the founder of Crossroad to set one up in Seattle. That'd be dope. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, we're gonna make that happen. It's just not on the calendar yet, because I'm gonna work out some dates. I mean, that's some to do list. I hear you. I hear you, bro. That's cool. You know, that's cool. So what you got? Um, I have Philadelphia, May thirty first. Uh, the and guys, by the way, go to our Zen Dude, Fa uh, Zen Dude Fitness Facebook page. All the meetups are scheduled there. Oh. Um, I am going to Philadelphia, May thirty first. New York, Saturday, June third. Boston, Wednesday, June seventh, and maybe somewhere else. I might make a might make one up, you know. Also, what's up with the forearm tattoos getting super wrinkly? Like I saw, I noticed yours did that, and now my arms all wrinkled. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, you just gotta put coconut oil on it, and you know, take care of it, and it's gonna be okay. Just give it some love. Give it some love. Ah, the old love. I hear you. I think <laughs> love. I feel like it's faded. A little faded. Dude, it still looks good. Baby. Can still see it. Barry Albert asks, how to improve sleeping quality and how to and how to fix a tight hamstring. Okay, Barry, those are two very separate questions. Brandon, why don't you address sneaky. the sleepy one? I like that one. Okay. I'll address the sleeping one. My dude, there are so many things you can do for sleep. Uh, Dan, if 
when you're making these uh, show notes to put in the description, if you just Google um, 12 steps to sleep better, there's like an article that comes up that will give you like this laundry list of things that you can do. Some of these things include like making sure you, you know, cut caffeine out like you know, pretty early in the, the afternoon, making sure you have at least like an eight to 12 hour buffer before your caffeine in your sleep. Um, getting blackout curtains is very important. Like any light that's getting into your sleeping area could interfere with your sleep. Making sure your the place to sleep is not too hot. Um, if you can get around like, you know, 65 to 70 degrees. So that's a money spot right there. It's going to keep you cool. Make sure your body's not overheated. Um, he's talking about supplementation. I know you should take this down. Uh, magnesium can be helpful for oh, yeah. getting you calm, helping you, uh, fall asleep. Um, making sure that you're not, uh, you know, if this bothers you, if you have trouble with sleep, making sure you're not eating like giant meals right before sleep. Um, and these are things that like you only have to worry about if you're having trouble sleeping. Like for me, for example, sometimes I never have trouble falling asleep. So all my windows are open. I have bright lights coming in from the city at night, but that's because I'm on trouble sleeping. Um, and so there's yeah, we'll link you to an article, but there's a lot of things you can be doing. Um, definitely starting going to sleep right beforehand with like a relaxing like meditation audio would be helpful as well, kind of like dropping you from that hyperactive beta brainwave state into a alpha, maybe even theta, slower brainwave, ready to go to sleep state. Dude. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. As a bro, I, yeah. was, I was actually pretty impressed by your answer there. So that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks so much. <clears throat> All right. We're moving on. We're moving on, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew Joseph asks, asks, what are your thoughts on lower than one gram of one gram per pound in protein? Research actually says point Eight two grams per pound as being optimal. It's splitting hairs, but I just wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Dude, this is a great question and one of the largest arguments, I think. One of the largest, most unnecessary arguments, in my opinion. Um, and, and here's why. I think when, like, when we say one gram per pound of, of body weight, that to me is not necessary, but it's used as a measurement. And what I say, when I say that, honestly, dude, if unless you're a competitive bodybuilder, 0.82 grams per pound or one gram per pound is not going to have a big difference on you. Like if your goal is to just get lean and look sexy, you do not have to worry about that minute of a change in protein. And honestly, dude, let's let, like be real with yourself. You probably fluctuate on protein like this. I know I do. Some days I get 0.5 grams per pound and then other days I get 1.5 grams per pound if I'm eating like a ton of meat or something. Like, dude, a Rhodesia steakhouse night? Come on, bro. We're eating like two grams per pound. But like my point with that is, and, and we talk about this a lot with everything, unless you are a competitive bodybuilder, um, I wouldn't worry about such a small difference in protein. The thing you want to focus most on is whatever protein number we give you with our Zen Dude Fitness Macronutrient Calculator, just try to come within 20 grams of protein plus or minus. And honestly, if you feel like you're eating too much protein and you're like farting all over your house and your you know, significant other or your family is like, dude, you got to stop this, lower your protein a little bit. It's not going to, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to like cause you to lose a bunch of mass. Um, so... Yeah, don't freak out about it. Just focus on getting, if you weigh 180 pounds, just make sure you're getting over 100 grams of protein each day. That's what I would say. Joel asks, since I haven't trained in so long and I can't perform push-ups, only knee push-ups, um, is there any other alternative that does the same thing and that I can do instead of the push-ups? Do knee push-ups. You just said you could do knee push-ups, too. Oh, sorry, but she said, she said, only knee push-ups, but after one set, my form will become really bad. Is there any other alternative that does the same thing? I can think of one for sure. Go ahead. Man. Yeah, well, um, I'm thinking of, if we're talking about like targeting your chest and arms with body weight, uh, what about you plank? could all, Yeah, she could do a plank for sure. Um, and then she can practice just doing like push-up holds. So maybe she can't push herself back up, kind of like a pull up uh negative yeah maybe she could start doing um push up uh knee push up negatives where she's just like bring herself up into like a knee plank and then slowing allowing her body to come back down 
So she totally. at least has some kind of like resistance on her chest. Totally. That, that's what I recommend. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Do that, Joel. Uh, next question. Emmanuel, what's up, my dude? Emmanuel asks, once you lean out or reach a desired look slash weight, how do you go about increasing daily energy levels? That's a great question, man. And the first thing I would say to that is, are you assuming that when you get to the desired weight or look that you don't have the energy level? Because that would be like, that would be a concern for me. But I think those are two separate things. Like just because you get to that desired look or weight from eating in a calorie deficit doesn't necessarily mean that your energy level should drop. And if they do drop, what that signals to me is that you're eating in too much of a calorie deficit. <clears throat> so you're not, you're not getting lean slow enough. It has to be a slow process because Brandon and I now, you know, are very lean, but we have, we have a lot of energy and it's, it's because we don't go into these drastic, we didn't go about our weight cut in a drastic way. Um, we do things, we did things very slowly and kind of gradually got down to this weight. So that would be my first recommendation. Um, make sure you're losing the weight and body fat slow. Um, now, if you're doing those things and you just need a general like increase in, in energy levels, that's when I would look into things like, are you sleeping enough? Are you drinking enough water? You know, are you drinking alcohol? Are you, um, like what foods are you eating? What time are you eating them? For example, if you're eating a huge meal around one, or let's say you're eating a huge meal at lunchtime that's full of like rice and beans and you're going into that, that crash mode where you want to go to sleep afterward, exactly, that'd be something I'd look out for, my dude. So um, feel free to comment below and, and uh, let us know like what you're experiencing, but those would be my recommendations. The next question, Steven Decker. Dude, Steven Decker got a sweet jump rope tattoo with a jump rope on it. He got to do the thing tat. Um, Steven asks, if I'm trying to get into intermittent fasting, am I able to switch my fast time day to day? For example, fasting in the morning one day and then fasting in the evening another day because of a work schedule. Great question, man. Yes, my dude, absolutely. Remember, the number one priority is making sure you're eating the right amount of food total per day. So if that's not changing, that's the number one most important thing. And beyond that, if you still want to get the benefits of fasting, it's just about how large the window is. I think a lot of people get confused about like nutrition and workouts when it comes to like timing. Everyone asks us, what's the best time to work out? What's the best time to eat? And really the answer to that question is like there isn't necessarily a best time for anyone for any of these things. It's a personal practice. So figure out like what you enjoy day to day. If like one day you're not hungry at all in the morning, then like, yeah, maybe just push your fast and like have your first meal at lunch. Maybe one day you're starving in the morning. Yeah, go ahead and eat early and then like don't eat dinner. Uh, so that's my recommendation. For sure. Shout. Ah, Fe Federico asks, how to build muscles without lifting weights? Now, one thing I will say to that, my friend, if you're just trying to build muscle and you have access to a gym, just lift weights. It's the e And we don't say this because like we love the gym. We actually made a video recently about how we don't work at, like we don't lift weights at all or that often anymore. So what I would say to that man is dude, lift weights. If you're trying to build muscle, it's so easy to build muscle with weights. Like basically you could do a couple sets on the bench press with a heavy weight or you, or you have to do like three or 400 pushups. I would much rather, cause I'm like a lazy exerciser. I would much rather do the weights cause that's going to build muscle faster and build it, build more of it than doing a bunch of body weight. Having said that you can build muscle doing body weight progression. So for example, if you start off doing 10 push-ups a day, then you move up to 20, then you move up to 50, then you move up to 100. That's going to help you build muscle, but you need to make sure that if you're doing bodyweight exercises, you are reaching that point each time of like failure. That's how the muscles are going to be built. So that would be my recommendation. My Tam asks, hey guys, my husband and I want to go on a trip for our 10-year anniversary. Congratulations. Any suggestions for places with beautiful beaches where we can just chill? Girl, I got you. Also, how about adding Toronto, Canada to your East Coast meetup tour? Smiley face. Brandon, go ahead. Um, maybe Dan will come see you in Toronto. I'm not going to be the East Coast for the time being, but we will be there both. We'll totally be there. At some point. I think. Yeah, one of the main dudes at Crossrope lives in Toronto. So, And beyond that... When we talk about like nice beaches, I don't know like what your budget is for your trip because there's just some places I think all over the world that are amazing. 
Um, obviously, Dan and I talked about this before. We lived in the Big Island of Hawaii last summer, and I've never seen beaches as beautiful and as peaceful. See, here in Colombia, there's oh, some man. really beautiful water and beaches, but there's a lot of people around, and it's like kind of crowded and kind of dirty. Hawaii is just so so clean and pristine and chill. It's just the epitome of chill. So if you can get to the Big Island of Hawaii, I would do that. And particularly 69 Beach. What was that called? Wailea? Wailea Beach? Yeah. yeah. Dude. Yeah. Look, Tam, if you can get to the Big Island of Hawaii, not only is there beautiful beaches, but there's like beautiful nature. And it is that place is like the definition of chill. That place is super relaxed. Lilla, we're both going to answer this one, Brandon. Lilla asks, what's the best piece of advice you have ever received and why? You want to go first? Yeah, you would want me to go first. Man, that's a <laughs> big... I can go first. Yeah, you go first. Okay, I don't know where I heard this. I don't know what, how this came into to like my life, but the best piece of advice that I've ever received was don't take people's advice. And I say that because I'm not saying you don't ever need to, you know, we're not, I, I definitely approach life as like, I'm like a kid, I'm a baby. Like, I don't know anything. Like, I always feel that there's more for me to learn. But I remember after hearing that quote, there's a large tendency in people to not trust their own instinct and to constantly trust other people for what they should be doing with their own life. And I think most times, guys, I mean, the definition of do the thing is most of the time you have the answers. You know what you want in your life. So you don't need to take advice from other people about what you need to do in your life. Now, it's okay to take pieces of advice and apply it to your own life um, to, to use it to like benefit yourself. I'm not saying don't be open to information. What I'm saying is um, whenever someone says, let me give you some advice, Always remember that they come from a completely different background. They have a different context. They have a different agenda. And they don't know uh, that well what your true goals are and what you want from your life. So my point in saying that is the best advice I've ever received is merely just to trust in yourself more and do what makes you feel good. I'm going to butcher this quote. So I know it actually is a quote this dude UC told me a while back because he told it to me in person. And then I saw it in his book that he recently published. But it's basically something along the lines of like, you know, your life is like a river flowing through these two banks. And on one bank of the river, you're everything. And on the other bank of the river, you're nothing. And your life just is the river that's flowing through that. And so it's like a good reminder that like, you are the most important thing in the world because like you're here, you have this like blessed life that you get to live out. And at the same time, you're just like a little speck that is a part of mm. the ever moving like universe that is going to keep going on with you when you die, but you're not going to be conscious of it. So it's kind of like balancing these two worlds of like every second is everything and every second is nothing. Oh, I love that, dude. That's kind of like, you know what that reminds me of? The quote that Gary Vee talks about. He's like, He's like, I walk around on this earth thinking that I am the greatest person in the world, but I also understand I am so insignificant. Like, I'm no better than anyone else. Like, I'm the greatest person in the world. That's what I think in my head. But I also understand that I am not, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I love yeah. that, man. Really quick. Um, this is a quote I heard yesterday from Jason Silva that is like, I'm not going to say it's like something that I'm going to live my whole life by, but it was really interesting. And it was that, you know, most of us like feel emotions and sensations in our body. And then we come up with stories to justify why we feel that way. And this is a game changer for me because I do this all the time. If I don't feel good in my body, like feel negative or something, I, I have to come up with a story about like why I don't feel good. Okay. It's because my, my buddy Dan left me and now I'm like bored, you know, or like it's because of this, because of this, instead of just like being like, you don't have to come up with stories for emotions. You can be like, oh, I'm having an experience where like, I don't feel that good right now, and then it's going to pass. Totally. And there's a reason why. Ooh, dude, I like that. Uh, you know what? I need to start watching his YouTube channel again. That guy says some like really uh, – he's, like, he he's a really good thinker, and I love the way he, like, he, he talks about certain concepts. I need to get back on his – check out Jason Silva on YouTube. The dude is like 
What would you, that's what I would call him. I would call him a thinker. Like he just walks around and thinks and then like talks about it on video. It's pretty impressive. He's, yeah. he's a, a high energy dude. Hussein asks, how often do you guys do core exercises? I do, oh wait, no, this is your turn. No, it's both. We can, turn. Yeah, we can both. Yeah, yeah. I do core exercises like three to four times a week. Yeah, I've been doing, um, I, I used to do them three to four times, and then I went through a period like recently where I was doing them like once a week, and more recently I've I've popped it back up to like th basically three times a week, um, and it's nothing crazy. I do like a few sets of leg raises where I'm on the ground, and I'm like lowering up and down to like sets of 20, do some ab crunches, but nothing too crazy. Always remember that your your abs really are a product of eating in a calorie deficit and losing body fat. Ah, oh, all right. Corey, Corey says, warning, possible artificial complexity. Thanks for the warning, Corey. Is eating 1,600 calories equal to 2,000 calories minus 400 in exercising? We don't want you to think about it that way. So we talk about it. if you're in any of our courses or in our dojo or anything like that, we have tutorials where we talk about this. We're like, don't try to play that math game with yourself because it's just going to complicate, as you just mentioned in the, in the question, what you're trying to do. Instead, just calculate your calories based upon your activity on a weekly basis. So we like to view this stuff on a weekly basis and then um, just eat those calories. And it's that simple. So like if just be like, hey, do I work out three to five times a week? If I, do I work out three to four times a week? Then uh, calculate your calories for moderate activity. Yeah. And then just eat those calories. And yeah. don't think past it. Yeah, dude. So I, I do want to mention you are correct. Like that you are right. 1,600 calories is 2,000 calories minus 400 exercising. But I, Brandon is right. We don't want you to think to yourself. Like that's why we have the calculator that already – uh, is is including your activity level. So don't, you're correct, but don't do it that way. Just eat the amount that the calculator gives you. Alphan asks, burn more calories jumping rope or running play as Alphan. Jumping rope, bro. We have a video about it. Check out burn 1,074 calories jumping rope in one hour. Next question. Robbie asks, how old are you guys and who is stronger? Great question. I am 27 years old. Bro, you're Dan is yeah. Dan is 28, and you're definitely um, stronger. I don't know. We don't lift weights anymore. Who Bro, knows? you're definitely you're definitely stronger than me. I've seen it, Brandon. You still bench like. Just trust me. And you were squatting like last year. Like, dude, I've I've lost a a lot in terms of in terms of strength in that area. So. B's got me beat on the strength, y'all. <laughs> he's so modest about it. He's like, yeah, you know, I kind of, I might be, I don't know. I, don't I agree with that. That's that face. Dude, I'm bench. telling you, you benched, I saw you benching like you were, I was spotting you last year. You're doing like 225 on incline. Like I cannot do that regular. All right. Okay. Let's leave okay. that. Next one. This is a great one. Brandon, you're not going to know the answer to this, but Stephen Fowler asks Geno's or Pat's and then Steven Williams asks I want to hear the answer to this one Dan Whitmer just to let you know Brandon Geno's and Pat's are fam two famous cheesesteak places in Philly and you know what Stephanie neither I don't like Pat's or Geno's because I'm really from Philadelphia and uh yeah I say I'm really from Philadelphia but I can't remember the third the, th the third one that's the actual popular one like people from Philly eat okay you guys are going to think, you're going to be like, Dan, that's a chain. But Primo Hoagies, yo, Primo Hoagies is my jam. Also, there's a place called Joe's Steaks in Philadelphia. Um, that, <clears throat> those are, are my top two choices. Geno's and Pat's are fine. Okay, I'm going to answer the question. If I had to pick between Geno's and Pat's, I would say Pat's because that's the more traditional one where they're like mean to you. It's the older one with like no gimmicks. It's just like, four old dudes and they're like, do you want whiz? And if you don't answer, they'll literally like tell you to go to the back of the line. Gino's is more like neon lights and like they tried to make it cooler, but I would have to say Pat's. But again, I wouldn't go to either of those two. I would go to Joe's or I'd go to Primo Hoagies. Rodwan asks, most of your calories at the beginning or ending of your feeding period? Good question. End. End. 
Yes, we always tend to eat later in the day. Um, this next one's for both of us. Shannon asks, what star signs are the Zen dudes? That's a great one. Star? Is that like a... Uh, Your zodiac. Like being an Aries? You're an Aries? Dude, what are the characteristics of an Aries? Um, I have no idea. I don't really follow that stuff. Wait, is it is star sign, is that the same as like cause... Horoscope. Cause, horoscope? Yeah. It's the same thing? Yeah. I'm an Aries. Dude. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't... I was never... I mean, some people have told me before what that means, but I just... I was just always... It's like, that's not a real thing, so... Dude. Well, I'm, bro, I'm going to be real with you. So, I'm a Gemini. I used to think that this stuff meant nothing until I actually looked up what... And I was like, oh my God. I'm like all these characteristics. And then people I dated, I would look their signs up and I'd be like, oh my God. That is who they are. It was weird, man. So I'm, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely somewhat of a believer in this, but I am a Gemini. I'm the twins, so. Vins, Vins. Hey, Zen dude, Braddis. What do you guys do when What's up, bro? You, what, do you, what do you guys do when you guys are stressed? I either exercise or I meditate. Or I self-medicate. <laughs> <laughs> I like that little wink, man. Um, yeah, I would say this. I, literally the same three. I would say the most powerful one for me is jumping rope because I can jump rope and like kind of meditate at the same time. And how I do that, I know Brennan does this too, is I'll put on either music that's like really peaceful and has no words and it's like meditation music, or I just won't listen to music at all, and I'll count like one, two, three, four, I'll count the rope skips in my head to like drop into a really good state of flow, but man, exercise, there's nothing that beats stress better than just going outside and just whipping your jump rope as fast as you can until all that aggression and anger or whatever sadness is, is out of your system, so that would be my reply. Sandra asks, what is the best way to treat sore muscles, lactic acid buildup when starting new workouts? Is it remedy? Like, is it, is there a remedy? Is it rest or is it to suck it up? What do you think, man? Um, I would definitely say just suck it up, but I know that you, Dan, use like foam rolling and stuff like that. I'm sure that'd be helpful. I'm just not, uh, I just don't know anything about that stuff. Well, no, I mean, I would agree with you, man. I think, like, the, to an extent, you just have to suck it up. Like, there's going to be lactic acid buildup, and your muscles are going to burn. And by the way, that doesn't go away. Like, I'm, I'm here in Cape May with my family. I just jumped rope <coughs> outside on the porch, and after, like, 25 minutes, like, my shoulders are burning really bad, and the lactic acid is still building up, but that doesn't mean that you, you know, give up. You just keep going through it. Other things that you can do, just make sure you're hydrated, you know, bananas, uh, you know, taking, taking like we take athletic greens that has a lot of vitamins in it that, that are going to help with the hydration process. Um, so that would be, those are secondary to just sucking it up, to be honest with you. Amar asks, what do you think of the Muslim fast? No eating or drinking from sun up to sun down. I think it's just fine, you know? If you wanna do that, I mean, listen, that's just like a, a life choice you're deciding to make. I'm not gonna speak to uh, whether there's you're gonna get any like uh, spiritual benefit from it, but I will tell you that going that long fasted is going to help you eat in a calorie deficit and help keep you lean. So if you just eat your meals when the sun goes down, which sometimes is similar to what Dan and I do, you're yeah. definitely going to be eating less. Um, you're definitely going to get the benefits of fasting. You're definitely going to have an easier time staying lean. I agree. I agree, my friend. I agree. Bosco Loon. This dude has my favorite name. This is like my favorite Zen dude name. <clears throat> Bosco Loon. How to always... Bosco Loon. How to... How... How... How to always stay in the Zen state and be critical in every moment. I think what he's just trying to say is, is how to stay in the Zen state as, as much as possible and stay present just in, in every moment. What do you think, man? Yeah. I mean, this, I'll let you answer this one. I'll just say it's impossible, and I'll let you take it from here. Dude, absolutely. I was going to say, man, you have to, 
Some people, especially in this like personal development world, want to make it seem like, you know, you're just this, like you should just be this hippie walking around like with no emotion, just like, I'm super happy all the time. Yo, as zen out as Brandon and I are a lot of the time, we're also not zen out sometimes. And that, you have to accept that you are a human, my friend. And sometimes like, we feel all the feelings that, you know, all people feel the same feelings, sadness, anger, extreme amounts of happiness, um, jealousy, fatigue, like all these things are, are human emotions. And I think that um, the best thing that has helped me in my own life personally is always continuing to work on myself and meditate and, and learn more about myself. But at the same time, just be more accepting of the fact that I'm a human. And when, like sometimes when I get angry, I don't get angry at myself for getting angry or I don't get, I don't get mad at myself for getting sad. I just feel those feelings. And like Brandon talked about earlier, feel the feelings and then they will dissipate. They're just emotions. You know, you have to go through them. Um, you can't just be in this state of like, Oh, everything's totally fine all the time. Like that's, that's not reality. Last question. Alden asks, is doing the thing making you do the thing while doing the thing as you maintain your do the thing routine? <laughs> I'm going to have to, you want me to ask that again? Yeah, it's one more time. Is one doing, time. I don't even know if this question makes sense, but I want to just provide an answer to it because I love when people ask creative, funny questions. Is doing the thing making you do the thing while doing the thing as you maintain your do the thing routine? I think I understand what he's trying to say. Yeah. Like, yes. is it a cyclical? Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, go ahead. Absolutely. When you do the thing, you're doing the thing. And so when you're doing the thing, you do the thing. <laughs> Dude, so true. I, I'm going to try to provide, like, my best. I, I feel like what you're saying is, like, Cheating. no, I don't know. But, like, is he saying, like, the more that you do the thing, does that build confidence to do the thing more? Like, does it make doing the thing in the future easier? And to that, I would say, I would say yes. Like, um, dude, I was just talking about this, the cold shower thing. Like, I still hate taking cold showers, but now I just do it. Like, I don't even, there's not even a, I don't wait five seconds to get in the water. I just go. I'm just like, ugh, whatever. Ugh, I hate this. And I just go in. And so I feel like, I feel like yes, Alden. I feel like the answer is yes. This episode was sponsored by Athletic Greens and Crossroad. Yes. Our two favorite products. Yep. Cross rope is the jump rope we use every day. We use multiple cross ropes. You can check them out in the description below. Athletic Greens. It's the protein we take. It's grass fed, nutrient dense, awesome. BCAs, great to take while you're fasted. And uh, their flagship product, Athletic Greens, which is a micronutrient explosion up in your body. So if you're not getting enough fruits and veggies or you just want some more, a surplus of nutrients, it's a great thing to take. Nice, man. I like that nutrient explosion. It's good stuff. Below. Linked. I like when we do a uh, right because then I can point to things below. I'm literally pointing to the description. See oh, this? yeah. Oh, man. I don't even have to edit it and put like a, a text in there because you're doing it for me. Thank you. There we go. Um, also, Brandon, before we go, I think it's pretty cool. Dude. Zendu Nation, I'm not saying that for 20 years we're never going to miss and ask the Zen dudes, but I'll tell you what, we're going to try. We're going to try to do this every single week. Um, so Amen. If, if we can do it in separate countries, I think, you know, I, we can make it happen all the time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you so much again for being here with us. It's Mother's Day weekend, or it was Mother's Day weekend. So go give your mother a big hug and tell her thank you and all the special women in your life. Please give them the love that they deserve for loving you. Um, Brandon, what are you closing statements, my friend? I love Zen Dude Nation. I love all the mothers. I'm um, happy. I'm happy to be a part of this uh, movement. Nice, nice. Zen Dude Nation. Oh, yeah. Zen Dude Nation. We love you, and we're out. Now, just like...